Hey, welcome to Phaser Tech. Today I'll be showing how to install the Diet Pi operating system, which is an alternative to the Raspberry Pi OS. They're both extremely similar to each other, and both based on Debian, but there's a few key differences that make Diet Pi the better choice. As its name suggests, Diet Pi is lighter and uses less RAM, which can make a difference in certain applications, especially in older Raspberry Pis that have less than 1GB of RAM. Another important difference is Diet Pi minimizes unnecessary writes to the SD card, meaning your SD card won't degrade as fast compared to the standard Raspberry Pi OS. Another key difference is the interactive menus that Diet Pi has, which makes installing packages a lot easier for people who are new to Linux. Also, both of them can run the exact same packages, so you won't be missing out on anything with Diet Pi. Now before I jump into the installation guide, I wanted to mention that this will be the first video on many videos I plan to do about the Raspberry Pi, and I'll also be using it as a platform for teaching Python programming. For example, the first project I'll be showing how to do is setting up your own security camera with the Raspberry Pi that can be streamed to any computer on your network. I also created custom Python script that can detect motion, allowing it to automatically record video only when motion is detected. This project could also be adapted for other uses, such as a hummingbird feeder camera that automatically records only when birds are in view. There's lots of potential uses for this project, and I think it'll be a fun way to teach Python programming. So if this sounds interesting to you, then please subscribe to stay updated. Alright, without further ado, let's start the installation of DietPy. First, go to DietPy's download page. The link is in the video description. Once there, you'll see DietPy supports many different embedded systems. Click on Raspberry Pi. Now you'll be given a few different options to download. If you're running the original Raspberry Pi, then you'll want to select the ARM v6 image. This also includes the Raspberry Pi Zero. For all other Raspberry Pi models, you'll want to select the ARM v7 image. The only exception is if you have an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4. In that case, you can download the ARM v8 64-bit version. Once it's downloaded, use Etcher to flash the image onto your SD card. You can safely get away with a minimum of 8GB for the SD card. But with how cheap flash memory is now, I'd recommend getting a 32GB card with at least an A1 speed rating if you're looking to buy one now. When it's done, go ahead and insert the card into the Raspberry Pi and turn it on. I'll be using SSH to access the Pi over my network from another computer. This method is the most convenient once you get it set up, but keep in mind you can also connect a monitor, mouse, and keyboard to the Pi and access it directly if you're not able to use a network cable. The first thing we need to do before we connect is find out its local IP address. There are multiple ways to do this, but I think the easiest is by using this software called Angry IP Scanner, which is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The link to download it is in the video description. After installing and running Angry IP Scanner, click the start button and it will begin scanning your network. Wait till it's done scanning, then sort the results by clicking the hostname column at the top. Your connected devices will show up with a blue circle next to them, so we know the Pi is one of these. Most devices will have a hostname to easily identify it, but in this case my Pi doesn't have a hostname, but I know it's this one here. Yours might not have a hostname either, so you might need to try a few IPs before finding the correct one. Now let's try logging into the Pi. If you're on a Mac or Linux, then you can use SSH to log in. The default username to log in is root. Open the terminal and type SSH space root at then your Pi's IP address. If you're using Windows, then you can use a program called Putty to log in. Keep in mind Diet Pi has a second user account with which you can also use to log in. The username for that account is DietPy, and the password is also DietPy. However, for the initial setup, you must log in with the root username first, so let's do that. 
Accept this message by typing yes. Now enter the default password, which is dietpy. During the first boot, the system will update itself which might take a while depending on how fast your SD card is. When it's done you'll see this screen. You'll be asked if you want to opt in or out of the data and statistic collection. I'll choose to opt out. Use the arrow keys to make your selection. Afterwards the system will automatically reboot. Wait a minute after it reboots before logging back in. You'll be asked if you want to change the default global password. Select OK and choose your new password. Retype it to confirm. Then you'll be asked if you want to change the default Unix password, which you should also do. If security is super important, then you might want to choose a different password than before. But I typically just use the same password to make it easier. Next, you'll be asked if you want to disable the serial console. This is something typically used by developers for debugging purposes, so for most people you can select yes to disable this and free up a little more memory. Next you'll see this screen where we can configure settings and install extra software. Keep in mind you can always return to this screen later if you want to make changes. Go to DietPy config and then select display options, then display resolution. If you have a monitor connected to the Pi, then you can change the output resolution here. Since I don't plan to connect a monitor to it, I'll select headless mode to reduce power consumption. Next, go to GPU slash RAM memory split. This is where you can allocate how much RAM you want the GPU to use, and it will depend on what you're planning to do with the Pi. For most applications, I typically go with the minimum amount which is 16 megabytes. If you plan to connect a monitor and install a desktop environment such as XFCE or Mate, then you should choose at least 64 megabytes. If you're using the camera, select at least 96 megabytes. Since I might be doing some video encoding with this Pi, I'll select 256. Now go back. If you're planning to use the camera, you'll want to turn on both the RPi codex and RPi camera. Also, the RPi camera has a red LED on the front that turns on when it's recording by default. If you want to keep it off, then you can set that here. Now go back and navigate to Performance Options. This is where you can overclock the Pi. I don't recommend doing it unless you've installed a heatsink and or fan like I did. The Raspberry Pi 4 runs hotter than the previous generations, so I'm going to select Medium Arm rather than the highest OC setting for this one. Now navigate to the network options for adapters. This is where you can set up Wi-Fi if your Pi supports it. Since I'll be sticking with an Ethernet cable, I'm going to turn off the onboard Wi-Fi. Also let's take a look at tools. This is where you can stress test the CPU to ensure your overclock is stable and also run benchmarks. Okay, now let's exit the config and take a look at some software that's available. The two options are search software and browse software. Let's first take a look at browse software. You'll see an extremely long list of available packages to download, including desktop environments, media servers, video game emulators, and much much more. Keep in mind you can install these packages later on using the command line like you would in any other Debian based distro. However, this browse feature makes it extremely easy if you're new to Linux. Simply hit the spacebar on all the packages you want to download, then click OK. Alternatively, if you know the name of a specific package you want, you can use the search software method instead. After you've selected all the packages you want, go to install to complete the installation. This might take a while to complete. Now that it's done, we're finally ready to use the Pi. Each time you log in, you'll be presented with this screen which gives some commonly used commands. For example, htop is where you can view the resource monitor. All the commands listed here need sudo to run. So type sudo htop and we can view the CPU and RAM usage here. To exit htop, press Ctrl C. Typing sudo CPU will give you information about the CPU, including the clock speed of each core. Now if you want to go back to the screen where we configured the settings and installed new software, type sudo dietpy-software to get there. And just like any other Linux distro, if you want to reboot, simply type sudo reboot. And if you want to shut down the Pi, 
type sudo shutdown dash h now. So that's all for today. If you found the video helpful then please like and subscribe to stay updated. And feel free to drop a comment if you have any questions. Also I'm curious what sort of Raspberry Pi projects you guys have in mind. So let me know what you have in mind and I'll consider making a video on it going over how to do it. The next video I have planned in the series will be showing how to set up a live video stream using the Raspberry Pi's camera, which can be viewed from any computer connected on your home network. So please stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.